Hi, everyone. It is March 31, 2019. I was uh, sent this video, Conspiracy Theorists and the Dunning-Kruger Effect Blackstone Intelligence Network. This was in response to the video that I posted last night. Included in that video was Alex Jones. He talking about how he was psychotic. He was, he, he was undergoing a psychosis, and that's why he was reporting on Sandy Hook, that being a staged event. Okay. Um, I'm going to read some of this document, Social Media as a Tool of Hybrid Warfare, in just a moment. I do believe that that is what we are living. Now, warfare is being conducted on virtually every aspect uh, of life, of any uh, of weather warfare, the geoengineering, all of the toxins, food warfare, vaccine warfare. Uh, my God, what we are living is really pretty intense to say the least but what is going on here on YouTube in the eight years that I've been on YouTube I came on the first year I was so impressed that was before Google owned YouTube and YouTube well the idea behind it was that it was for you the ordinary individual to uh, post videos, commentary, um, blogs or vlogs. Um, it was not meant for mainstream media and we've got a mainstream media, the authoritative news sources that is taking over YouTube. In fact, last night, I, I'm amazed when I do searches on YouTube, what I come up with, pages and pages and pages of mainstream media videos. That's it. That's it, really. Last night, I was looking for a video, Max Egan. So I put in Max Egan, New Zealand New Zealand shooting. All I got was mainstream media. Nothing, no videos that were Max Egan's. Then I put in Crow House, New Zealand shooting. All mainstream media news videos. I didn't get Crow House. So I had to go to his channel to get his video on it. That is happening more and more. We are being phased out. The truth is being phased out. When Google took over, suddenly the changes were coming fast and furious on YouTube. And I remember that first change that was well, very clear to me what Google, their, their intentions were to break the bonds that we were forming here in, in the cyber world. That's what I was so impressed with that first year when Google did not own it. People were working together. There was not all of this divisiveness and fighting and yeah, there was a little bit, but it was 90% of people working together. Look at it now. I hate how these uh, social engineers, how they are so successful. And that's why I have been really driving home the point that we've got to do the work on ourselves in order to know who we are so that we can stand firm and uh, we've got to be living our principles not just 
talking the good game because the people who talk the game and don't, you know, the people who, who talk the walk but don't walk the walk, they're empty inside. They don't have any substance. So those are the people who are so easily manipulated. They think they're awake, but they're being so easily manipulated. And we have more people like that than we do have people who really know who they are and stand firm. Those are the people who are less likely to get ma manipulated. Um, and I hope you understood what I just said. Trump comes in. We're, we're all pretty much on the same page during the Obama years. Trump comes in. And suddenly, there are so many very big channels who are on that Trump wagon, doing that QAnon reporting over and over again. But when I hear they say things like, if you don't support Trump, you're working for the other side. Wow. So, they have that dichotomous thinking that they communicate. And there's no middle ground. There's no, hey, I just want to take a step back and look at everything objectively. No, you're working for the other side if you don't support Trump. Those are the channels that I no longer watch. And for those who have gone, I guess people go through, you know, who, uh, who people are subscribed to, and then they write these comments, well, you're subscribed to this person and you say you never watch. <laughs> I may not delete channels, but it doesn't mean I watch the videos. You know, the thinking, oh boy, it's really remarkable how people think. They, they don't really, they don't really think well. Um, and that takes a lot of work. So, yeah, it's exhausting. This, this time period is exhausting because we have so much warfare and so many attacks coming out coming at us from every direction but here on YouTube it was so noticeable once Trump got into office that there were channels that people well I'll speak for myself that I thought I could trust and Trump comes on board, okay, well, I felt betrayed. When you present one way, and then suddenly you become something that people don't even recognize, that's a great betrayal. And there's numerous channels now that I, I, don't, I don't know who to trust. When you break down trust, you have nothing. You've got nothing to hang on to. You, you have, you know, everything just becomes meaningless. That's what they want. And that's what they got. And I've said this numerous times. We have to work. We've got to be proactive and we've got to be very conscious every single day of what we say, what we do, and make sure that what we say and what we do does not break down trust even further. We have to be proactive in reestablishing trust. Because once trust is gone, then you've lost the war. That's it. It's gone. You know, soldiers in a, in a conventional war really do need to trust one another. We are at war. It's unconventional, but we are at war which means that we've got to be very conscious of what we do and say. And we've got to put aside 
all of these insignificant um, matters that people are continually fighting. Oh, you don't, you're, you're not a Christian. Unsubscribed. Um, you know, uh, this dichotomous thinking. Oh, you hate Trump. This channel has just become a, a Trump-hating channel. Unsubscribed. So, Carol, would it have been better if Hillary was in the White House? Ah, oh, you're a liberal progressive, huh? You're just a liberal, uh, a libtard. <laughs> because I post a video showing the evidence that Trump is the same old, same old. And then I get people attacking me for that. Um, <clears throat> well, look, you know, you can continue staying the same. And people who do continue just never changing at a time we are facing. We are facing losing all of our freedoms. Losing it all to these elite nut jobs. If you think you don't have to change, you are absolutely part of the problem, not part of the solution. And the comfortable, those who do not have yet to suffer the consequences of what we are dealing with, they're usually the ones who just go on, never changing, never doing anything different. And that is sinking us fast. So this guy, Blackstone, intelligence. You know, it's like so often now we come across these channels that have established themselves as, uh, well, what people have decided these categories, truthers, you know, the truther category. Um, they establish themselves, they present themselves as being on a certain side, and then boom, they change. So this guy, Blackstone, Intelligence Network, he has come out and he is saying that we are the nut jobs because we have claimed that Sandy Hook was staged, was uh, a staged event. I, I, I do want to bring your attention to uh, FEMA Emergency Management Agency. Site activation call down drill exercise plan, mass casualty drill. And in this document, it says mass casualty drill using children. Children involving children. Mass casualty drill involving children. And what's the date of this? The date is publishing date. October 8, 12, exercise date, December 14, 12, um, 2012. Drill involving children, mass casualty. Just so happens to be the date of the Sandy Hook Massacre. So this guy has established himself as, uh, well, I would say a lot of people believe that he's really intelligent and he does all of the work and he does all of the research and he has presented an awful lot of uh, videos um, communicating information that is very important for all of us, right? Okay. And boom. Now, this video... One hour, 11 minutes, 16 seconds of bullshit. But he's established himself. And a lot of people are very, they, they do not understand who they are. They have not done the research themselves. And they follow people and they listen to people. And, well, 
perhaps on a conscious level, but most have it on a subconscious level. Uh, they're stupid uh, and everybody else is smart, so they listen to smart people and they think whatever they say is, well, he's smart, so he knows. There are a lot of people who do that. Fortunately, in reading the comments, um, and now, okay, good, um, a lot of people <laughs> have not gone along with him. So now suddenly my mouse is not working. Great. Um, and a lot of people are saying, what has happened to you? Is this guy's name Jake or something? I don't know. But in listening to this video, I couldn't believe, you know, he doesn't go, he doesn't touch that there was a FEMA drill. He doesn't touch this, right? Uh, he doesn't touch an awful lot of the evidence prevented, uh, presented. And I don't care about Jim Fetzer, okay? So don't even bother leaving comments. Uh, whether you like him or not, it's not about Jim Fetzer. But he has right here presented a tremendous amount of evidence that Sandy Hook was staged, that nobody died, and when you know that, well, even just in the first couple of pages, um, the Attorney General of Connecticut argued against releasing the 9-11-911 calls. The court ruled against him. That's why a lot of people were posting on those 911 calls, because the court ruled against him. But why would, if this was real, why would the Attorney General of Connecticut want to prevent the public from getting those 911 calls? That doesn't make sense. The clerk of Newtown entered into secret negotiations with the state legislature to avoid issuing death certificates. Why? If it was real, you know, death certificates, public. Why would the clerk of Newtown enter into secret negotiations to get those death certificates sealed if it was a real event? There would be no reason for this. A special panel of the state legislature recommended that any state employee who released information about Sandy Hook other than via a FOIA request be persecuted uh, prosecuted, sorry, prosecuted as an E felony with a five-year sentence. Why? If it was real, there would be no need for any of this. Those who were hired to participate in the demolition of the school building were required to sign lifetime gag orders that prohibit them from talking about what they saw or did not see during its destruction. Why? Just those four facts alone should, in any adult with a working brain, these facts should beg questions. Why was the public denied access to documents that show that school was closed, not a school operating. In fact, I had people contact me when I was posting on Kafka Winston World a lot of the Sandy Hook videos. And by the way, it was Lenny Posner, yeah, one of the fathers that had a son who got, well, yeah, he was the son that died at Sandy Hook and then died uh, in a, was it Pakistan? Yeah, he died again in a mass murder in Pakistan. Okay. Uh, those pictures were presented in an awful lot of videos. But my channel twice got terminated by Lenny Posner. 
if this actually occurred, we would just be seen as just nutcases. Don't even, you know, uh, you would not have so many people posting videos showing the evidence that this was a staged event. That just would not happen if it was a real event with children dying. Wolfgang Halbig, um, former law enforcement, former principal, a hired consultant for school safety. So an expert in this area. Uh, he can't get the documents from the state of Connecticut. The documents that show, he, he was just simply asking, you know, uh, for names of employees that worked at Newtown at Sandy Hook, the elementary school. And that was denied. You know, it's like, all right, who is in the lunchroom at Sandy Hook? elementary school feeding the children couldn't even get documents on that why because there were no there were no employees at Sandy Hook Elementary School it was not a school that was open it was a closed school now does this guy go into any of that does he go into any of it no he just, he speaks as if he knows Robbie Parker and knows what was going on with Robbie Parker. And Robbie Parker, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know, he was the guy that was laughing uh, prior to, he, he's a father of apparently one of the kids that died at Sandy Hook. So he's laughing and then he goes into his, you know, takes a deep breath and because he's on air and he starts talking about the death of his son. Um, very unusual behavior, but this guy, well, he knows exactly why. He knows exactly why Robbie Parker was acting like that. And then he picks apart the photoshopping. Uh, it was um, Robbie Parker who God, this was years ago, but he had photoshopped. There was a, a photoshopped picture of these kids and of his kids. And then he goes into, I photoshopped pictures of myself and my kids. Claiming that, well, this is just what happens. This large, is, this large is, proof this that is supposed that to be. Uh, intelligence this is supposed to be intelligence something is going on here and you do have to be very very careful in terms of who you are listening to today unfortunately because we cannot trust anybody but you know, and apparently I guess a parent uh, of the Sandy Hook um, kids he killed himself last year. Well, we don't even know if that's true. We don't know why, if it is true, the guy killed himself. But, you know, look, there is overwhelming evidence that this was a staged event. And for this guy to come out and post an hour and 11 minutes deriding, degrading, uh, trying to humiliate, um, calling conspiracy theorists, you know, um, you know, stupid, the Dunning-Kruger effect that he, I couldn't listen to it anymore. Look, I've lived 60 years of lies. I am so repulsed now. I can't listen to people make their stupid arguments. It's a stupid argument, Blackstone, that you make in this video. Um, but to, I didn't even get, I couldn't even listen. You know, what is he talking about? The Dunning-Kruger effect? Conspiracy theorists and the Dunning-Kruger effect. Dunning-Kruger effect. 
is it, people who have very little knowledge on a topic tend to significantly overestimate themselves. People who are stupid think they're intelligent. That's essentially what the Dunning-Kruger effect is. And thank God, oh, I found a video with somebody, because I just am too exhausted, but Dunning-Kruger is wrong. The social sciences should be real science. It's not real science. And he breaks down that this whole Dunning-Kruger study was bullshit. So what is this guy doing using that as a, as related to anything? It's, it's a, yes, it's shocking. It's shocking. And everything that is going on now, it is so incomprehensible that we are living this time, but we are living this time. And it is exhausting. It demands so much of us. We have to continually back, back away, look at everything objectively, try to understand what the hell is going on. And in fact, oh, a subscriber sent me a song that I'll link to, you should listen to, which is a song I really love. And I can't play any of it because I will get a copyright. But what's up? What's going on? You know that song, right? 25 years and my life is still trying to get up that great big hill of hope for a destination. And so I cry sometimes when I'm lying in bed just to get it all out. What's in my head? And I, let's see, let's see. I am feeling a little peculiar. Yeah. Aren't you feeling a little peculiar in this world? And so I wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and I get real high and I, Scream from the top of my lungs, what's going on? What is going on? What is going on with people? What is going on in the world? We are going through warfare. Warfare. And this is very real. So let me just read a few of the uh, sections of that document. It's a NATO, NATO document, okay? Social media as a tool of hybrid warfare on NATO's site. Unconventional, asymmetric, irregular, hybrid, or new generation warfare. The doctrine Outline following activities, war is not declared at all. Military action starts with the activities of militant groups during peacetime. Non-contact clashes between highly maneuverable fighting groups are used. And I'm not going to read, I posted videos on this document. Um, massive use of high precision weapons and special operations, robotics and weapons, that use new physical principles, directed energy weapons such as lasers, short wave radiation, 5G, uh, the extremely low frequencies that, well, here you go, directed energy weapons, all of the extremely low frequencies that are in use, the Doppler radar, sending out dangerous frequencies. This is not just for the weather warfare, but it's also for the mental battlefield. The mental battlefield that our military has been waging against people all over the world, but Americans as well. So when you see the amount of uh, frequencies, I'm sorry, where is it? The whole East Coast and Gulf Coast was lit up last night with a lot of 
the Doppler radar. And the extremely low frequencies, and where is it? Come on. Okay, well, you see all of the extremely low frequencies and the Doppler radar pulsating these frequencies. Um, the extremely low frequencies, you can see all of the well-defined um, lines that fan out in the blue. Um, yeah, okay. The massive amounts of frequencies that are in use now in South Carolina, very often the microwaves along the coast, the extremely low frequencies. Uh, this is warfare. Warfare. All of these frequencies disturb our thinking, disturb our mental processes, and yes, in fact, we have here uh, the, the new mental battlefield, Beam Me Up Spock. This is, this is a United States military document. One of the chapters, that's what it's titled, The New Mental Battlefield, Beam Me Up Spock, written by Lieutenant Colonel John B. Alexander. It was published in Military Review in 1980, and psychotronics may be described as the interaction of mind and matter. Mind-altering techniques, manipulation of human behavior through use of psychological weapons. Um, so, our military, NATO, they're all at it. They've been at it for years. And when I see people like this, I have to wonder if they're part of the warfare. So, let me get back to, uh, yeah, yeah, directed energy weapons. Doppler radar, extremely low frequencies, directed energy weapons. That's what they are. Um, the use of armed civilians, four civilians to one military. They use civilians. Think about the targeted individuals who are targeted and gang stalked by civilians. They use simultaneous strikes, simultaneous battles on land, air, at sea, in the information space. In the information space. Troop management in a unified information sphere. Sphere, And is he one of the troops? Perhaps. Perhaps. This is what is happening to us, guys. We really need <laughs> uh, to keep our wits, you know, to not... It's very hard not to just either give up or lose it in all of this craziness. But here, deception, creating noise, informational fog around a topic in order to distract attention from more strategically important events, distract the public, distract the public, distract the public. And the uh, psychotronics, the mental battlefield, to get people to just have no clue uh, on what is going on. So you get people like this who've established themselves as, yeah, this man he absolutely does the research, and then he posts on that research, and it's information that we all need, and boom, hits you with, Sandy Hook was real, and they're all conspiracy um, theorists, and they're dangerous, and they're uh, harassing the Sandy Hook parents, and oh my God, isn't that horrible? And putting all of us down, putting all of us down, it's a tactic that they use to shut people up, to confuse people, and to break down trust. Because when you have no trust, you've got nothing. Uh, hybrid warfare can be characterized as a form of warfare which comprises a mix of methods, conventional and unconventional, military and non-military, overt and covert actions involving 
cyber and information warfare aimed at creating confusion and ambiguity on the nature, the origin, and the objective of these actions. What the hell are people doing? I'm confused. Don't understand it. Okay. Uh, what makes modern warfare so different is the effects the information can cause to the development of the conflict as audience perception of the outcome of the conflict matters more than the actual facts on the ground. Now, facts and evidence have just become ob obsolete. Fight over control of perceptions and behavior is an integral integral part of modern conflicts, information warfare. Intelligence collection, focused search for and analysis of information from social media networks and profiles including content and conversations done either overtly or covertly. Um, there are several approaches to analyzing social media for intelligence collection, trend, network, sentiment, geo, uh, content, behavioral, systemic, and information analysis. Analysis contributes to target audience analysis, support psychological warfare. They are looking at everything that we are doing. They are gathering uh, all of the data. They are assessing everybody, their profiles, their videos, their comments, uh, analyzing it looking at our responses and yeah they are also analyzing our responses to Alex Jones coming out and saying I was psychotic and um, Sandy Hook was real as well as people like Blackstone Intelligence our responses don't get confused by this don't get confused by people like him Mountains of evidence. And this is a really important piece of that evidence. MASH, ma MASH, mass casualty event using children. The date of the Sandy Hook event. But you're not going to hear him say anything about that. So, um, selection of targets for operations both on and offline. Social media makes it possible to get detailed information without being physically present. Useful source for situational awareness. Uh, identifying the early warning signals of a future crisis. Crowdsourcing, increasing increasingly used by media employees and activists for fact-checking, unmasking disinformation, identifying developments in a conflict. For example, a joint project run by the Atlantic Council and Bellingcat was able to track and provide evidence of the presence of Russian troops in Ukrainian territory simply by collecting information from social media profiles used by Russian soldiers, Google Maps, images in the media. It makes it possible to counter disinformation, counter truth, counter whatever they need to counter. They have all of that information pretty much in real time. You know, just hitting a few buttons and clicking a few, um, clicking on a few sites, boom, they've got it. cyber operations targeting social media platforms and accounts to breach password protected spaces, alter the content of a profile, or render a website completely unusable, offensive, or defensive. It includes actions like distributed denial of service, which we have seen very often happen, attacks on websites, password hacking to gain access and expose the content of chat rooms, emails or cell phones, altering content in social media accounts, or intrusion into databases in order to collect information. This is what they are doing. 
This is what they are doing. We've known this for years and years and years. So when you come across people like this, all you have to do is back away from them. Something's wrong with this guy. Clearly, we've known something's wrong with Alex Jones for years. But something is wrong with him. Hold on to your integrity. Don't let these people uh, bring you down by claiming that you know, you're a nut job. The only thing that I agree with that this guy said was uh, those who are harassing the Sandy Hook parents, th that that's going to get us further and further uh, into the coffin with, you know, the final nail being driven down. Violence is not going to, you know, do anything for us. And I, un I understand that a lot of people are, you know, calling for, you know, some violent revolution. And I have thought a lot about you know, what is it going to take. It comes down to each individual working on their own self. That is the bottom line. Each individual has to work on their own self to become better and better, more morally strong, living the principles that you speak. Um, that is the only thing that is going to manifest any kind of change in the world. With people staying exactly the same, that gets you exactly the same, except increasingly worse. We're going down, everybody's staying the same, nobody changing, nobody taking any action, nobody doing anything different in this war will get us to just keep going down, losing more and more of our freedom. So, um, yeah, I would say just back away. Um, don't get manipulated in this cyber warfare that is taking place. Activities are aimed at preventing other actors from using social media platforms to communicate coordinate actions, access information, or distribute messages, at least temporarily. Activities are aimed at preventing others from using social media platforms to communicate and coordinate, organize, and effectively fight what is taking place with this rapid reshaping of the world for the elite's pleasure and all of us become the slaves and killed off. How do you do that? You break down trust. The one thing these sick nut jobs have, they trust one another. They get the job done. They don't fight over stupid, insignificant things. And these people also understand your psyche, your how you can be manipulated. They understand psychology. Do we need to change to understand all of that as well? Yes. Yes. And when we understand how easily manipulated we are, we can pull ourselves from that and not get manipulated anymore. I don't like that NATO and our military has won. I put it in the definitive one. It's not, it, look, if we don't get our act together, it's won. It's gone. The world we know is gone. Now, because I understand getting one's act together takes a really long time. We're talking years.
we're talking years. So um, that's why I've said now we get to just watch the unfolding of more and more life getting destroyed in this war. Command and control using social media for internal communication, information sharing, coordination, synchronization of actions, important for non-state actors such as insurgent groups, particularly if these groups lack formal structure or are dispersed over large geographical areas, means of communi uh, communication, and a way to coordinate their activities. However, the use of social media exposes the activities of insurgent groups to intelligence services. Swarming tactics. The distribution of information to mobilize and coordinate non-state actors with a common interest. Using social media, actors are able to gather quickly for protests giving security uh, giving security Inf inform and influence psychological warfare dissemination of information to influence a target audience's values belief system perceptions emotions motivation we're seeing that right here in this video he's targeting his audience Um, as well as targeting their reasoning and behavior. Achieve certain military effects in the cognitive domain. Shape, inform, influence, manipulate, expose, diminish, promote, deceive, coerce, deter, mobilize, convince. Some other techniques, psychological influence and manipulation on social media increasing the visibility of the message. The use of automatically generated content by spamming, Twitter bombs, sending out thousands of similar messages at once, fake identities, trolls, sock puppets, bots, spread a message and minimize alter al alternative voices. So I have to say, there is a lot um, I, I give credence to those who say the big channels, you know, with the uh, load, just very, very high numbers of subscribers, and they never get taken down. Yet you do have to wonder what's going on. I've seen other channels with uh, high numbers of subscribers, like. I was watching a channel that had 70,000 subscribers and I was looking at the views, 5,000, 7,000 views. So they are, they are absolutely silencing voices of the smaller channels and not silencing the voices of the very, very large channels. Now, does that hold true? 100% of the time, no. Because some large channels we have seen go. They get terminated. Very interesting that they're brought right back up. Um, well, this is the, the perfect uh, environment to cause an awful lot of damage. The cyber world, we don't know one another. How could you possibly trust me 100% when you don't even know who I am? I've tried to show myself as much as possible about who I am. Um, how can you possibly know any, anyone, even those who show their face? How do you know that this guy is not acting or if he's real, if he's genuine? If, if, how do you know what his intentions are? We don't know. We don't know. That is why it was really important to have a society based on trust. When you have now a society with so many Americans who don't give a shit about anything, they really, they don't care about trust. They don't care about 
you know, their own self. Um, they don't care about respect. Do you see behavior just now? It it's broken down to a point where it's it, it's almost like shocking every single day where I live. I see behaviors. I am I'm like oh my god. None of these behaviors we would have seen decades ago. Now it's like a free for all. Everybody just do whatever the hell you want to do and don't care at all about your effect on others. That seems to be now the, the general rule that can only happen. That can only the social engineers can only bring that about when you have people who live a pretense and don't live the principles that they claim to have you know the values that people claim to have um, you have a society filled with people who have just no substance within themselves and they go along to get along we know that our population just became children. We've been infantilized for a long time. So the adult population still have this childlike psychology, psyche. Um, uh, emotionally, they are children. And, well, that is a society filled with people that are very easy, easily manipulated. But you don't have people who are strong within themselves. They don't have strong moral characters that are hard to uh, convince them that they should be behaving in other ways. I do hope that I'm making sense. I. This is so important, you know. Uh, saturating the information environment. Coordinated use of blogs, posts, articles. Posted and reposted by opinion leaders, activists, and fake personas. Here's a fake persona. As far as I'm concerned, this is a fake persona. Um, hijacking of trending hashtags order to increase the reach of a message or misdirect audiences. Targeting and distracting the opponent. Distrib distribution of misinformation and rumors to publicize an opponent's alleged wrongdoing. Attacking the target, blocking adversary content or asking social media platforms to remove the content of specific profiles by complaining about inappropriate content. All of this, what I'm reading, this is what we are living. This is what we've been living for years. Involves personal attacks. This guy personally attacked us. Uh, acquire personal information and use it to defame, ridicule, ridicule and threaten. That's why they're collecting every bit of data you have on the internet or what you are putting on your phones, whatever. They're collecting it and if they need it, they'll use it against people. Social engineering, psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. For military purposes such as espionage and information gathering, Attacks can be automated, conducted by bots, carried out by humans with fake identities. Very hard to do this in real life without the internet. That's why we were given the internet, so that we can put all of our information right there exposing ourselves and then they use the internet to confuse, to deceive, to manipulate, to and they do have an army of people on the internet, on YouTube, 
doing just that. So, uh, internet trolling, organizi uh, organizing activities by using fake identities in internet and social media in order to achieve certain effects. Phenomenon of imitating grassroots actions using social media is known as astroturfing, tool of inf influence, spreading propaganda and rumors and distorting the online discussion by attacking commenters with all alternative views. What is needed, what is needed, especially right now, are a people strong enough to withstand all of these attacks. Are people who recognize the importance of trust. Are people who have a conscious awareness of their behavior, how they think, and prior to behaving in a certain way, prior to communicating something, they know what the effect will be. They know. So, they restrain themselves from doing or saying anything that will lead to a greater breakdown in trust, and they do the opposite to ensure that trust is built, built again. I will link below to everything here. It really saddens me that we are where we are today. I hear from many of you. You know, most are feeling so isolated now, can't talk to family, can't talk to friends. Um, have no one, you know, that cares enough to do something about this war that we are engaged in. Um, and a lot of people are scared now. They're scared to say anything. They're scared to speak out. They're scared to uh, take any action. I get comments from people who get angry at me. Say what? So you want me to take action? And here you are reporting that somebody is being put in jail, you know, for simply speaking out. It's because we have few speaking out. They get destroyed. We need more people speaking the truth, not less. We need people to find their courage. That takes a lot of work. Men, women, individuals, they need to do the work necessary to understand why they can't access the courage that is within them. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to be abandoned. Now, so they're afraid to say anything to their friends or family for fear of abandonment. That means you have a child in that adult body. And they need to they need to begin to investigate their own self. Why am I afraid to show who I really am, to speak my truth to my friends and family that well, you would expect that people can be themselves with their friends and family, but they're not. Why not? Because they're afraid their friends and family will reject them. If you can't be yourself, what's the point of living? What's the point of these relationships that you have? Regardless of who they are, family, friends, neighbors, doesn't matter. If you cannot be yourself in life, as far as I'm concerned, 
There ain't no point in living it. So, don't leave comments about my voice. You know, trying, well, I wasn't really trying to sing that song. But yeah, listen to it. What's going on? We need a revolution. And we can only get that revolution when the individuals create their own revolution within themselves. People need to change. Revolution is about change. People need to change. Ciao, guys.